How do you get better as a coach? That's a question I get asked over and over again, and that's something I ponder every single day. Well, I think I have the answer. It's called Film Breakdown. Let's get into it. Hey coaches, Coach Mackey here and welcome to my channel. This is the first time visiting my channel. I'm going to give you the elevator pitch. Football, offense, defense, special teams, RPOs, tempo, any and everything that has to deal with football we talk about here. So if you want to learn more, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification so you know when I go live and when I post videos and we can have fun. Now, I wonder, especially during this lockdown and during this coronation, uh, how do you get better as a coach? What do you do? You can't play games. You can't, you don't learn, you learn from experience, but you don't have experience to go off of right now. What I do is something I stole from Bill Belichick. It's called padding. You are watching the game, you're breaking down film, and you are looking at what other coaches are doing. Not necessarily to figure out, can I put this play in my offense, but more of a, hey, why did this coach call it? What was he looking at? And how can I get better? We're going to do something similar. We're going to do film breakdown, this new series. Film breakdown, where I break down film of teams that I like. And in today's one, we're looking at 2019's Ohio State versus Wisconsin because I love Ohio State's offense. Let's get into it. The first touchdown Ohio State scored on was a nice little wrinkle that I promise you you are going to see a lot of in this upcoming season. Um, it's out of a three by one. It's second and nine. And what they do front side, and I don't I don't care about what's happening on the back side or anything like that. I'll, I'll go over that on the film, but on the front side is where it's really cool. They're playing some kind of cat coverage, covering up man to man right here, playing read over these guys. And when the ball is snapped, this defender right here sinks into the box. So to me, it's almost like a cover zero type play. What they do is they run him up the seam, and then he kind of runs a corner. He does the same thing and runs a corner. And what they do is they bring him underneath, make it look like it is going to be a snag, like he is going to sit down. But that's not what happens. The reason why he acts like he does this right here is because he wants this cat to sit here and try to wall him off. Well, he's going to fake him out, and then he is going to take it, stutter a second, and then he's going to take it straight up the field for a touchdown. Let's see the film. Here's the first touchdown. As you can tell, he is going to go the F, is going to run a corner. The Y is going to run a corner. The R is going to come underneath, act like he's going to sit, and then he's going to run straight up the field. The L is sitting as a curl, and the running back is just going to sit in the middle like this. It is such a nasty play. Look, you see how he looks like right here? He is going to sit, but he's not, and then he curves it right back up. Boom. Touchdown. That is a nasty play, and I promise you, you're going to see a lot of other teams run this type of play. The next time Ohio State scores, it is a beautiful play design. This is almost like, this is the bash tag. And what I mean by that is they're running outside zone to the left, but they are arc releasing these two guys right here, and they're reading the four eye. If you know anything about inside zone, you know that when you block a four eye, it is a very difficult block to do. So they said, you know what? We're not going to block them. We're going to read them, and we're going to put a little twist on that read. So they arc release the tackle to the linebacker. They fan the Y out to, or the tight end to get this apex defender. Everybody else blocks on. To the backside, they're running outside zone to the left. The quarterback is responsible for this man right here. This is who we are reading. If he takes the running back, which he does, the quarterback disengages, and now he is running the outside zone to the left. If the tight end or if this tackle right here, this four eye, just sat, then he would have handed the ball off and it would have been a score as well because it was a hat for hat. Let's go to the film. I wanted to show you the end zone video so you could see how it goes and why it's so nasty. They Everybody else is going to run their normal inside zone right here. He's going to arc release like this. He is going to arc release. There's a guy out there. This running back is going to run the bash technique, and this is the man right here we are reading. As you can tell, take the snap. He takes a step out. So if he was going to give it, he had the angle to intercept. So he had the leverage over the running back. That's why Fields pulled the ball, and now he's going to get right in this hole. Look what this action does, though. Look at that. He is chasing right here. He is frozen. He knows what to do, but this man's going to come up and block him like that. 
It is a perfect play. You could not, <laughs> you could not draw this up any better than that for a nice and easy touchdown. Hey coaches, real quick, sorry for interrupting. Hey, listen, if you want these play diagrams and if you want a little special something video, not not of me, but you know what I'm talking about, there's a link down below in that description. Click it, it'll take you to a page. Type in your name and your email and I will give you the diagrams and that special video, wink, wink. And let's get back to it. This play right here wasn't a touchdown, but I'm showing it anyways because I want you to see that even in college, the smart offensive coordinators and head coaches, they come back and they run something that's successful. This is what happened. Ohio State has an unbalanced line. They then motion this man across. It's a very simple concept. So then they motion him across, and now they are just running inside zone to the right. So everyone has essentially got a gap. They're comboing and then running and doing all this stuff, and then he is going to come back across the line to kick out. They have, I really don't know what they have on the backside. It doesn't matter because what they're doing is they're running. He found the seam, and then he took off for a big play. I want you to keep this play in mind, though, and pay attention to what, what the touchdown was later on in the game. Now we've got film. Boom. Here's the play. I want you to keep an eye on this play because we're going to see it again later on. We've got unbalanced over here. We're going to motion him across and then come back and kick out. Everybody else is running their inside zone tracks. He hits the center's button. I want you to watch the running back's landmark. He is on the hash, and then he ba uh, bangs it right in this A gap. So we go across. He comes back. Look at his footwork. He sees the hole, and then he just takes it. He makes a guy miss, which, you know, your D1 athlete, everyone has. I'm not saying everyone has one, but their running back's usually their best athlete to make a guy miss, and he gets some good yards right there. But keep this in mind because later on, Wisconsin doesn't adjust, and Coach Day comes back and uses it again. This play right here, Ohio State just lined up and said, you know what, homies, we are more dominant and more physical than you. You can't stop us. They set up in an overloaded or uh, set motion the L across, and they just ran straight up to me, the untrained eye duo, where they got as many double teams at the point at line of scrimmage as possible. This guy right here just did what he does best. He's a running back. He's one of the most athletic guys in the backfield. So he opens, goes downhill, reads this man. He comes in. He cuts it opposite him, and he got a nice, easy score. He made a good play, but he read it right, made a man miss, and scored a touchdown. As a coach, that's all you can do. Next touchdown, here we go. I want to just, again, show you the end zone version. This is just a, hey, we are better than you. You cannot stop us. You got a double team here. You're going to get a double team here. You're going to get a stalemate. You're going to get a double team here. He is going to cut off. This guy's going to come here and then bend it all the way back. This is why I say it is duo because you're getting as many double teams as possible. Look at that. Double team, double team, double team. Where is his eyes? His eyes are right here on 57. You see that he's 57 is right here in the hole. So what do you do? You bounce it. And now all you got to do is just keep it tight. Look at this. This guy's out of alignment right here. We've got a nice block. This guy's like, hey, buddy, come follow me. I'm going to lead you to the promised land, which he does. And that's a touchdown. Nice and easy. Remember when I told you that to keep this play in mind, that unbalanced inside zone play, well, the reason why I said that is because Ohio State came back, ran the same play against Wisconsin. Wisconsin didn't adjust at all. The coaching staff of, for Ohio State, as you know, top-notch, Ryan Day, unbelievable coach. He says, hey, they didn't do this. Let's go back to it, see if we can't pop it off. Again, they do for the score. Let's go to film. Here's that same formation from earlier. Wisconsin doesn't change. They don't do anything different. They, so Ohio State goes to the same exact play, bring him in motion. We're running inside zone, bringing him across to kick out. It doesn't matter that we can't block this guy because he's already out of alignment. The running back's just going to see it, put his foot in the grass, and get north and south for an easy touchdown. Again, don't overthink these things, guys. If you have a play that worked, don't be afraid to call it again. This is what a major D1 school is doing. They call the same play more than once with a better result.
The last touchdown Ohio State did was a simple rollout, speed out. For some reason, uh, Wisconsin was playing this R receiver with inside shade, so they just ran a quick speed out. What I did like about how they blocked it up front, pass protection-wise, is they chipped, and then he tried to go and reach this man right here along with the running back. I thought that was really good. But you're getting an explosive quarterback to the edge where he can either throw it or run it really smart. That's why they make the big bucks. And you'll see how easy this play was. Last touchdown, we've got an overload to the left, which means it's one-on-one -on -one right here. We've got the edge. So the quarterback at Fields is either going to be able to throw the ball or run the ball. He seals it. All he's going to do is a nice, easy speed out, get some depth, attack down the uh, downhill, and then just make a simple throw, something that you make every single day in middle school and high school. That's an easy throw right there, pitch and catch for a touchdown. And there you go, man. That is every single play that Ohio State scored. I don't know about y'all, but breaking down and padding film is something I love to do. It helps me get in the mind of people that are smarter than me and, want, and look at it and go, okay, why do they call this? I am now learning through them, and I'm getting those mental reps before the game even starts. If you want the diagrams for this and the uh, special video, if you know what I'm talking about, there's a link down below. Click that, or it's the very first comment, the link in the very first comment. And until next time, let's continue to master the spread, score points, and have fun.